We're talking about mediums in this video. So I have a bunch of materials out here and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what a medium is, what a medium is made out of, and then I'll show you how to put together some of those materials to make mediums on your own. And then we'll talk later about how to actually use them. So a medium is a material that you mix into your paint to change the characteristics of the paint. And that can make it so that the paint stands up. That can make it so that the paint levels out. Um, really anything that you, any characteristic that you want your paint to have, we can find a way to make a medium that will do that to your paint. Um, so the, a medium has with, with one exception, there's, a, there's like, in my mind, there are two different um, categories of mediums. One is a wax medium, and then one is everything else. Um, I'm gonna mostly talk about ever, the, the second category, everything else, um, and this is beeswax. You can see it's, uh, it's fairly opaque. We'll get some out later, um, but, Beeswax is an exception to the stuff I'm going to be talking about. So when we talk about mediums, there's three components. There's an oil, and here we have stand oil, and we have black oil. Uh, black oil is linseed cooked with um, uh, lead. And any of the other linseed oils that you might come across, the oil that your paint is ground in, any of the cold pressed oils that you might find at the, um, at the art store, any of the linseed oils is fine. The, the next component is the resin. A resin is a tree sap of some kind, and there are various different kinds. I have here, uh, this is Damar, and so you can see that. Uh, it's just uh, crystals. It's tree sap that's been, uh, it comes out of a tree and is crystallized. We're going to dilute that down. The, the best way to, to, to get to Mar varnish is actually to buy it in these crystals and then uh, sort of make it, put it together yourself. Uh, this is Venetian turpentine. Uh, and the, 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 the thing with mediums is there's a whole bunch of different words that mean different things to different people and in different contexts. So as I go through this, I'm going to try not to be too confusing. But turpentine literally means uh, a tree sap that's wet, that, that, uh, a tree sap that's coming out of the tree. This over here is gum turpentine, and it's pine sap that has been distilled. So that's where things get a little confusing because I'm likely to talk about turpentine. Usually I'm referring to this. I'll usually call this Venetian or Venetian turpentine. But anyway, so we have an oil, we have a resin, and now we have a thinner. And gum turpentine, the real thing, not the, the really crappy stuff from the hardware store. Uh, when it comes to hardware store materials, odorless mineral spirits for cleaning up, things like that. Those are really great from the hardware store, but gum spirit of turpentine from the hardware store is not what you want to use. It doesn't, it's not right. It's not distilled from the tree sap. It's distilled from kind of a pulp and it doesn't smell right. It doesn't handle right. It doesn't do anything right. So this is much more expensive, but it's the, it's the good stuff. So if you're going to make a medium, first thing we got to do is make sure that we have a resin that we can use. Now, this is what I refer to as uh, Damar concentrate, and it's a little bit watery, but the idea is that it's the most resin that you can have concentrated into gum spirit of turpentine. And I'll explain in a second how we're going we're gonna to do that. So we've got our crystals, 
that are just Damar crystals. And I've got a little jar here. And what I'm going to do is scoop out one part. of the crystals and then I'm going to pour out one part turpentine So that was one to one, and we always do painting stuff by volume, so that was a, a third of a cup of Damar crystals and a third of a cup of turpentine. And now what we do is put the lid on and wait two or three days, a week, two weeks really however long you want to wait. But what will happen is the turpentine will dissolve the crystals uh, within a few days and the what I call the, the, the Damar concentrate is going to be the stuff that's on top and all the stuff that the turpentine couldn't dissolve or little bits of the tree that the Damar came from, bugs, all sorts of weird stuff will be down at the bottom. And all we'll do is have another jar and we'll just pick this up and we'll decant it, just pour it in there, and then you'll have a bottle like this with a whole bunch of Damar concentrate in it. Now, if you're into using Damar as uh, the resin in your mediums, you want to use the full strength concentrate for your medium making. One of the reasons that I started by showing you how to make Damar is because the concentrate is useful to make varnishes from. And that's another term. A lot of times the term varnish gets thrown around as if varnish is something that you would add to your paint. Um, I don't like to use that terminology because it confuses this with the subject of varnishing. So if you're going to make of varnish from your Damar concentrate, you can do that. You just take one part concentrate and put it in a separate jar and then mix that with one part gum spirit of turpentine and you will have a final varnish. If you want to make a retouch varnish, you take one part concentrate to two parts gum spirit of turpentine and you'll have a retouch varnish. And that's a whole nother subject, but it's probably worth talking about right now. Now, before we move to the next section of the video, I can make beeswax in a separate video, but just let me show you what it is. So, um, and again, when you're making beeswax, all it is to just save time here is you get some beeswax from RNF pigments. You get some from naturalpigments.com. Any of these places, it's going to sell you quality ingredients. And you again go one to one. You have one part beeswax and one part gum spirit of turpentine. You put them in a bowl and you heat it until the wax melts into the turpentine. And then when you pour it off into a jar like this, it looks like water when you're doing it, but it, it gets more opaque when you put it in here and it dries. But what you'll end up with is sort of a gel. And it's going to have whatever this does, 
When you mix it with your paint, that's what your paint's gonna do. So beeswax can be really fun to work with. And the, the, the only two materials that you need for a beeswax medium are beeswax and turpentine. Some people like to put Damar concentrate in there too. Uh, I like to keep it simple and I, I, I don't do that, but you can. And there's, there's a whole class of mediums that requires a, a level of chemistry, a professional sort of chemistry knowledge to be able to produce, but it has to do with uh, cooking beeswax in with different oils and things like that and producing a medium that way. The rules are the same, they're just kind of combined a little bit. All right, so now we have the part where we make our, our medium. So we have the component parts. So we have a, a stand oil here. Get a little bit more out of there. So that's stand oil. Now stand oil is going to give the paint a quality that's going to smooth the paint out and make it um, sort of level. Damar is over here and I'm not putting them together yet. The amount that you have out here between resin and oil is, is going to be up to you. You don't, there's no set proportion that's right. I usually go about 75% oil to 25% resin. And then if the, if the medium is a little bit too syrupy, in this case it's not, if it's too syrupy you can add a gum spirit of turpentine, which I just tapped off camera. But in this case, it's pretty watery so I don't need to do that. In a lot of cases, adding too much gum turpentine is, is what causes problems with people's mediums. Uh, when you go to mix them together, you have the, the medium, or sorry, the, the resin. You're supposed to mix the, the oil into the resin, not the other way around. So we just take our stand oil, drag it over to here, and just bring these two together. If you think it's too syrupy, It probably isn't, so I would, for the most part, recommend leaving it alone. The sand oil that I'm using is from Gamblin, and you can see as it moves around inside the bottle here, it's, it's a little bit more watery. It's, it's, it's not as thick. There are some sand oils that you'll come across that are going to be very, very much like molasses, very, very thick. And that just, that, that might make it so you need to add turpentine, but for the most part, you may not. So there's a couple different ways to use a medium. The first way is to simply take some, a small amount, and mix it into your white. Now for the purposes of illustration, I'm going to overdo it. But the idea behind a medium, remember, is to change the quality, the handling, and sometimes the optical quality of what the paint's doing. So right now, titanium white out of the tube is usually a little bit buttery, a little bit waxy. And for the, for the purposes of doing things right from a technical standpoint, there's a thing called the 80% rule. The 80% rule is that you want, in any mixture regarding your oil paint, you want 80% paint and no more than 20% medium. So the amount that I just added is probably enough. But like I said, we're going to break the rule right here for the purposes of illustration. So this is too much. But you can start to see what's happening to the paint. See how it's not buttery anymore? It's not standing up anymore? See how it's starting to rope? 
and we can, we can get it to be really, really smooth. It's got too much oil in it, but this effect is sort of an exaggeration of what the, the particular medium is going to do. When we get to wax medium, you'll see it's the exact opposite of this. So this is getting the paint to level and relax, and, and it kind of wants to be a little flatter. So this is going to be a decent medium for someone who paints very thin, likes to work in layers, um, maybe someone who likes to use glazes, this is going to be great. Wax medium is going to be more for the a la prima type um, impasto kind of people. So I wanted to continue to illustrate different aspects of this. So this is a piece of paper that's primed with latex uh, house paint and then it has some oil paint on it. And just give me a second to mix up some color. So I want to show you the other way that you can put a medium to work. And since I overloaded this particular batch with medium, I'm going to add some more titanium white to both of these just to uh, decrease the ratio of medium, just to make the handling a little bit more realistic. So in this case, there is some medium in the paint. But it's, it's back to a realistic uh, amount. So this is our painting surface. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load the brush. And I'm just going to make a stroke here and see how far I can go with it. So this is a dry surface. All right, so we got that far before the, the paint stroke started to break up. Try and load it exactly the same way. And then we're going to take some medium and going to put it down first. And you can do this with a brush, you can do it with a palette knife, you can uh, do it with your fingers. There's a little bit of turpentine in the medium that we use to make the damar. So maybe it's not the best thing to be doing it with your fingers, but I'm not real worried about it. So I put the medium on and then I wiped the medium off. And that lubricates the surface of the painting. And now we've got our brush here all loaded up and ready to go. You can see how much further that stroke went. It sort of stopped a little bit here because of the way the brush was loaded. But this would have kept going and going and going where that one kind of stopped right there. So the handling difference between painting onto a dry surface and painting onto a wet surface is night and day. And that's one of the main things that you're going to want to use a medium for. I don't know that this is true, but the way I think about the word medium is that it's, it's medium, it's in between. It goes in between the paint you're applying and the surface that you're painting on. And that's primarily how I use it. Now, one of the problems with what I just did is I, put, I smeared medium all over the place here and I only made one stroke. It's really important that when you put medium down, you paint into whatever you put down. So if you block in the whole thing, you have to paint in the whole thing. So just let me show you what, what that's going to mean. And we'll inadvertently do some glazing here. We have a nice transparent ultramarine blue. 
spot. Okay, so I'm going to do another little section. Where I put the medium down first. Wipe the medium off. And a lot of the time, if you're having trouble figuring out where the medium is, you can uh, tilt your head to the side and you'll see a glare. And that will tell you where it is. So I'm just going to take this ultramarine blue with a little bit of white in it. And I'm just going to paint it into where the medium happens to be here, just in this one spot. And now I put the medium on, I wipe the medium off, I put the color on, and then I can just very gently start to wipe it off. And just in, in terms of discussing mediums and how they're used, we, we end up talking about glazing a little bit. So if we ever do a video on glazing, it'll be largely like this. And you can kind of see how this goes. I'm not going to sharpen it up too much, but that's a pretty good glaze. And, uh, and the thing is, we got there without diluting the paint. And we also got there without breaking the 80% rule. By putting it on, putting the medium on first and then wiping it off, we end up with just the right amount of medium to affect what we're trying to do. And then we can, uh, and then we can paint into it like we normally would. So if we have this paint here, now I can, since this area here is wet, I can, I can do whatever I want. This nice long stroke there. And if we tried to do the same thing on a dry surface, you know, we, we shown that here, it just doesn't happen. Um, so those are the two basic ways that you can use what amounts to sort of a standard kind of a medium. And this would apply to uh, just about any medium you can come up with. But I do want to show what happens with wax medium. So here's wax medium. Put it over here. Maybe we'll have a little bit more. I don't want to run out. Okay, so nice big blob of titanium white. And if we push titanium white around again, we see how it what it does how it handles, it's kind of buttery, it peaks a little bit. Now if we take wax medium, a lot of times when it comes out of the jar, it's going to be a little bit stiff, but it has a quality called thixotropicity, which kind of, it kind of means that it's a solid when you're not touching it, and it's sort of a liquid when you are touching it. So if, if a thixotropic medium, like wax medium, starts out kind of stiff, you can just kind of mash it like a, like a weird toxic potato. And it will soften up and it'll give you some, some handling qualities that you might not otherwise get. So I'm going to take all of this and mix it in. Uh, well, no, I'm not. I'm gonna, Observe the 20% rule. So, if we take the wax medium and bring it in here. You can see the, the quality of the way that the white handles is now completely different. 
It's nothing like this buttery kind of thing. And I know the lighting is maybe not super conducive to seeing what I'm doing, but I'm building like a little, I can make the paint stand straight up in the air if I want. And when it comes out of the tube, it will not do that. So, if we take a little of our ultramarine blue and make a color, optically the paint looks a little bit different. It's lighter than these, but you can see you can see how fluid and relaxed these are, and you can see how stiff and waxy this is. If we go, I'm going to use the same brush, but if we go and pick this up and just paint into really an, a, a wet area, or I mean, let's start with a dry area. We just make a stroke. It's going to be very, very different from what we got with these, um, the stand oil medium. But this is going to be good for like individual strokes if you're an impressionist or you're trying to make a la prima type marks. It's going to be a little more interesting that way. If we paint into this wet matrix over here. Yeah, the wax doesn't want to go quite as far. But the handling quality of the wax springs can be really fun. It just depends on figuring out for yourself what some of the uses for this are going to be. Um, and now, the mediums that I just showed you are the two far ends of the spectrum in terms of what a medium can do. The stiffness and the waxiness of this and almost the sculptural quality of it, that's one end. The fusing, gravity affects it, um, kind of softness of this medium is the other. Almost every medium, aside from these two, is going to be in between these. So that's where the, the sort of spectrum is and you can, you can just start looking around, finding different mediums that you can, you can handle and treat like this, and you can get all sorts of different effects from them.